Hello, everyone, and welcome. I, I have to show you something. Something totally insane happened right before the challenge. I was in my room, and, uh, okay, I'm just going to show you. I caught a mouse. <laughs> I got you guys so bad. Uh, hi, welcome back to our daily creative challenges. My name is Andrew Hawkrattle, and I will be your host and guide. Over the next uh, two weeks, we're just about through our first week, but we'll continue on through next week. If you're just joining us, the daily creative challenges are a great place for you to step up and learn a little bit more about Illustrator and a little bit more about design. Lots of familiar faces in chat today. We have Juhi, we have Barbara, Amna, Chris. Um, I love seeing you guys in here and engaging with chat. Let me know, as always, where you're watching from. Drop it in chat. Always makes my heart happy to see the world come together. So today we are going <laughs> to... I know, wait, it was really bad. I'm sorry. Uh, so today we are going to be learning about making badges using type on a path. Um, today is going to be a lot of uh, theory, like yesterday. We did a lot of theory yesterday. Today we're going to talk about a bit of theory, but then we're also going to get in and get hands on. Um, and yes, don't quit your day job. I agree, James. I don't want to quit my day job because I get to be here with all of you. Um, and I guess the bad jokes are part of my day job so I don't know you might be stuck with it uh, all right so we are gonna hop in and start talking about some ways for you to get involved to follow along with these daily creative challenges we've been going for about five days now so you can catch up if you like by going over here to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator this is the place that we live I'm gonna go ahead and refresh um, and what this is hello from Budapest oh so cool watching from Kenya Oh man, that's so cool. I wish I could get back to Budapest. Um, so what this is, this is the daily creative challenge. You can just click right here on this button and you will get notifications every single day when we go live with the next challenge. Um, we've done a couple fun challenges so far. We've stretched some type, done some good stretching to start out right. We designed a logo to make sure that our gym was nice and pumped. And yesterday, oh, sorry, and then today we are creating a badge, which we'll be using some type uh, to make sure that we have something super strong to put on all of our weights. Uh, and hello from Canada with love. Oh, nice. So much love. So you can get connected here at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. That's the place to get our source files as well. Again, today, you don't really need the source file for today, um, but it may be helpful. Uh, some of the other days, it's much more mandatory. But today, you can download it if you want some affirmations. If not, then don't. Uh, hello from Moscow. Cool. I'm outside your window, Keith says. <laughs> nice. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and talk about some other ways that you can get involved. And when you do your challenges, what happens next? So the best way to do that is go up here, bit.ly slash AI Discord. That's the place to get involved. That is the place to be posting your work. Go there, jump in, say hello to this incredible community that we're building. And one of our mentors will give you feedback feedback on their uh, on your projects. Um, I will be in there giving feedback on your projects as well. Um, and so if you want to follow along and get feedback from me, you can go and follow hawk.co. You can follow that on Instagram. You can follow that on Behance, on Twitter, wherever you like. Um, I will be going live each night giving you feedback for your daily creative challenges. Um, if you're here, we also are live again at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or noon Sydney time. If you're watching from New Zealand or uh, anywhere in Australia, we're again live at noon your time as well. So you can follow along right there. I'll give some feedback. We'll hang out and just have a grand old time. Hello from Turkey. Um, I love Turkey so much. Spent a little time in Istanbul and Izmir. So uh, gorgeous, gorgeous place. Thanks for tuning in. All right. So let's keep going here. Again, this is where you get involved with bit.ly slash AI Discord. And let's hop over and see what people have been making. My goodness, people have been making awesome logos from yesterday, having so much fun and getting some awesome feedback from our mentors. We have Colby, who I believe is in chat, Jack, Kathleen, Cloudy, and our friend Rocky. So make sure you hop in there, start posting your work, and let us know, and we'll be live to give you some very important and cherished feedback. Uh, now let's see, I don't think I have anything else to announce today. I have some very special announcements happening tomorrow, um, but we'll have to just put a pin in that and have you guys come back. Uh, uh, so if you haven't tuned in before, hello, I'm Andrew Hockrattle. I like to do a little bit of information and a whole lot of entertainment. So we're going to have some fun today. We've been doing these daily creative challenges through the lens of a fitness 
uh, theme. We're doing maybe gyms, maybe a fitness location. And today we're gonna to be learning about how to use type on a path and lay out a badge. And we're focusing this time on balance. It's a very important thing within fitness to have good balance. I have terrible balance. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but I believe that a costume change is in order before we jump into our lesson. So let's go ahead and hop in and see if we can meet up at Hawk's Gym. All right, we are back, and yes, I am full screen today. This is big, big, uh, big me on the screen today because we have a couple things that I need to talk about, and we need to be on the big screen so that you can see exactly what we are doing. So, what I want to talk about today is the idea of type hierarchy. Typography has a voice. Um, typography can be heavy. It can be light. It can have presence. It can uh, have uh, the negativity of presence, uh, negative space. But what I want to talk today is about how we can balance visually our typography badges. So I want to do, this is an object lesson. Let me grab these just real quick. All right, so when we are working on creating a badge, let's say that the whole frame that we have here is the badge, right? We have this entire frame, uh, and maybe let's do it like my shoulders or arms. Maybe my body is the frame. And sometimes we want to put some type in it, right? And we put type on one side of our badge, and the type is like this, right? The type is a little, um, what is this, five pounder? Yep, so the type is maybe like a light uh, sans serif, right? It's kind of thin feels kind of modern, and we're putting this on the left side of our composition. Now on the right side, we want to use something like Trade Gothic or Druck, right? That is this nice human, is super thick and chunky, some bold type that really wants a punch. And so we want to put that on the other side, and so we come in with this guy, right? And so if you can feel, right, the weight difference between these two, you can see it, and you can see that this arm is having to work so much harder to weigh, and this one is so much lighter. And in our overall composition, my entire body is starting to lean to this side, right? So it's starting to lean to this side, and so when we're making tight badges, we want this to be balanced. We want it to be balanced on the top, on the bottom, on the side, on the side, and so today, we're going to think about the weight of the typography we use, and keep in mind the five pound weight and this 125 pound weight. It's not that. Uh, <laughs> I really tried to sell it. Um, but so that is, those are the, the ideals that we're going to talk about today. Um, and so outside of our object lessons, let's hop in and take a look at what we can do with selecting our type, right? So let's do that. Let's hop in right here. That was a good little, that was a good little pop. Uh, so, using type, I usually want to think about hierarchy, and type hierarchy is whatever is the most important down to whatever is the least important. Uh, usually the top of the hierarchy, we want to be very bold, very big, kind of in your face, and then be able to scale down for that, something that is the mid-ground and then something that is low ground. I always think about it as um, someone that is yelling from a distance someone that is telling you kind of the overview of something and someone that is explaining an entire idea. Um, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, thanks, Matt. I'm glad you think I'm that strong. Uh, so th those are the three, right? Yelling from a distance, uh, bringing in close, and then telling all the information. So we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna look for the yelling from a distance font. Uh, and I'm just at fonts.adobe.com, a great resource to find good typography for your hierarchy. And I know I want something super chunky, I want something that's gonna be a little wider. There we go. Uh, and this is filtering all of these that I want for the height and the chunkiness, the chunk. And I only want sans serifs uh, because I want it to kind of have that uh, uh, kind of modern feel to it. So here I'm just gonna put Hawks Fitness. 
And this way I can see a preview of what I'm using. Now, I really like Nimbus Sans. Uh, let's go ahead and click here and see if it has a bold. It does, look at all these options. So what I can do is there are some fonts, right, that are not activated. And let's see, I want Nimbus Sans Black right here. So I'm gonna click Activate Font, and that is now syncing to the cloud, and it is activating um, all the way across. Uh, and hello, Gus is here. What's up, Gus? Welcome to the party. So this uh, Nimbus Sans here, uh, let's actually take this over in Illustrator. So it, it is syncing through the cloud. And when I come over to Illustrator, we'll see um, I'll just type in Hawks Fitness, and we'll blow that up real nice, and I believe it was Nimbus, yes, there we go. So Nimbus right here is super thick, super chunky, this is the top of our hierarchy, right? This, this has the weight of that 25 pound weight, right? This feels like it is heavy type because of the thickness. Um, and because of the way that it's laid out. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna find something that is a little bit lighter. And so I'm just gonna use Trade Gothic. Uh, Trade is one that I use all the time, uh, super easy as a support font. And Trade, again, feels a little taller, but it feels like that little five pound weight. So we have our thick one, and then we have a little bit of a thin one. And now I'm gonna show you how to think about um, making sure that all those weights stay even when you're working with a design. Oh, there's a bird literally yelling at my window. So if you guys can hear that, there's a bird screaming right at my window. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna do is I wanna create a unique shape and we're gonna use the simple shapes by just coming over here and using an ellipse. And I'm gonna do this cool kind of trendy tombstone kind of thing by making a circle here. And then I'm gonna grab a rectangle right here. And I'm just thinking about the frame that I'm gonna put this on. And I'm gonna make a rectangle that kind of just goes across the bottom here. Right, and this is like the trendy, right? We've all seen this. We've all seen this a million times. This is like the trendy, cool thing to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and outline this so that we have a nice outline here. There we go. And I'm gonna, I'll fill this top shape just so we don't really see it. Uh, let's just join them. So together, let's join them using the Pathfinder over here. There we go. So we have this cool shape here, something that is very trendy. Um, and now we wanna put type and we wanna think about where this type goes. Now, what I like to do is I think about it, not necessarily as where am I putting the type, but where am I putting the shapes? Where am I using the positive and negative space, right? And that's why I want you to think about it as those weights that you're using, right? We have the full frame, right? It looks like I'm like this, of how am I gonna hold those weights? Is we wanna make sure that we use simple shapes. So I'm just using the box tool. And I wanna make sure that everything fits just right. So here, it feels like maybe this would uh, weigh a little bit too heavy to the left. And so I wanna make sure I balance that out on the right. Um, now, if we want to put maybe a logo or some sort of graphic up here, right, in the middle there, now it feels like it could topple over the top. Um, now, what we want to do is maybe put in some things over on the side, right, and this will help to balance that out as well. Uh, and again, we're thinking not necessarily with type, but with the generalities of like what uh, what shapes we'll be putting down, what weights are we stacking to create what kind of interactions. So I'm gonna do maybe a line here to really lock this in, and then another line down here, oops. Another line down here, and we'll put some type right in the middle here to make sure that that really locks in. Now we have some open space here and we're looking at a uh, positive and negative space. That's really what you wanna pay attention when you're working with these to make sure everything's balanced, but also that you're working with good positive and negative space. So we have something open right here uh, and instead of one big chunk. So uh, this will help you visually. If we put another chunk here, it feels too heavy, right? It feels like it's really kind of sagging down. And so we're just gonna do a couple smaller chunks. So this is just mapping out, hey, this could be where our type goes. 
right? And from here, I would just start applying this type hierarchy that we've used, right? The Hox Fitness, um, we would use the chunky one in this space and the lighter one in these spaces. Uh, but what I wanna show you really is how to type on a path and follow this path. So we're gonna create a circle, and this is gonna start to put our hierarchy in. Uh, we're gonna create a circle and we are going to delete this bottom portion. We're going to hit T to grab the type tool and click here on the little squiggly line. And here's where we're going to put Hawks Fitness. Uh, we're going to make this in our top of our hierarchy. There we go. And I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. So uh, you can see that it's aligned to the baseline. We did this a little bit yesterday as well. We want to go up here to type, type on a path and we can go to type on a path options, oops, and set the align to path to the center. Uh, we're gonna hit okay here, and I'm gonna center this type, and now you can see that it has these nodes, that this is the center, this is the end, and this is the beginning, so I'm just gonna drag this to the center right there. Now this isn't quite what I want, I want it to have a vertical and then come around, and so when we have type on a path, you actually can expand it. We can grab our pen tool and click on this node here of this anchor point and just continue it down. And you can see that it will keep uh, extending that type and the path that it is on. Uh, so there we go. We have our type on a path kind of following those. Yeah, that's looking good. Uh, and so we have that kind of weight right at the top, but I want to put something at the bottom that maybe helps to balance that out, right? And looking at our uh, composition, we had a shape, which I have here from yesterday. So if you made a logo yesterday, uh, you can just drop that in. Oops. So we maybe want to drop this in here. And again, with our hierarchy, we are just thinking about weight, right? Visual weight, how does everything come together? And when I put this in here, to me, it feels like it needs something, right? There's some negative space that's trapped in here. And so what we can do is we can use our type hierarchy to grab a little bit of a lighter type, right? This is the trade Gothic that we've been working with. Uh, so we are, hello, Blake, what's up? Uh, so we can use our type hierarchy to say again, right? The yelling from a distance. Now this is kind of inviting them in. So maybe this is where we put the since 2020, right? We just opened it. It's new. And the size and the weight of this type helps to dictate the lightness, right? It keeps uh, putting things in and makes it so that it really locks in and has a perfect balance. Uh, now, down at the bottom here, maybe we want to put a tagline, right? We can say like, uh, you know, we'll pump you up. And thinking through, we want to not use too many typefaces, but we want to expand that hierarchy into something that's a little bit thicker. Uh, and yes, it does become clearer with the icon 100%. Um, so we are just going to blow this up. And there is a bold version of this. So let's go to the bold. Uh, let's see if there's a heavy. There we go. So heavy condensed. So now you can see, right, that we have Hawks Fitness is maybe a 15 pound weight. And then since 2020 is that that 25 pound weight, right, the, the, the anchor. And then we have a nice light five pound weight up here at the since 2020. So we'll do, we will, uh, let's pump you up. Let's do that. Let's pump it up. There we go. So now we have this type, it is thick, it is chunky, um, and maybe here to keep that balance going, we put that line that we had seen, again, to just make sure that the weight is all dispersed properly. There we go. So it feels right, like it is weighted evenly, but there are some issues that are happening right here. Right? These are feeling a little bit wonky on these edges. And so what I wanna do is maybe do some little, uh, some little badges. So let's go ahead and make a circle. Uh, and we wanna keep it on the spine. So again, we're going to type on a path. We, and we're gonna hit T, which is the type tool. And we are going to hold Alt or Option to type on this path. So here, we're just gonna say, um, let's say get it get it. Let's just keep saying get it around. Actually, that looks kind of fun that it is all around like that. 
Uh, we're going to space it out so it's even. There we go. Uh, and this is something that we can keep on uh, the base here. If we want to align it to the center, we can. But it doesn't really matter on this. We can align it to that baseline. And we can change again back to our lowest level. Right, so we don't want this to be something that's super important. This is something that is, again, a lower level on our type hierarchy. So I'm just gonna shrink this down. And again, we're keeping it on that type on a path. And I'm just gonna put something right in here because it needs a little something to fill out that space. There we go. So this is the badge that we had made, uh, that we have made for today. And we used a lot of type on a path. We used very simple shapes. And we used this idea of kind of the weight of things. Now we changed the actual composition once we get onto it because I really wanted to show you type on a path. Um, but think about the weights, right? We have the same weight at the bottom. We have this shape we just moved into the middle. And then we have that arc across the top. So when you are designing your daily creative challenge for today, I want to see two things. I'd love to see the type hierarchy that you use. And um, what are the fonts that you use? What is the, the most weighty? And and then what is the lightest? What's the one that is the big, bold, grab your attention? And then how does it scale down from that? Um, so show me what typefaces you're using for your type hierarchy. And then I also want to see this. I want to see you plan out where the weight of your badge is going to distribute before you show me that final badge. And then put it all together and show me what that final badge looks like. Um, so that's your challenge for today. Again, some areas that you can get involved and you can get more information with that. You can go to bit.ly slash AI Discord. That's where you can get involved. That's where you'll be posting these daily creative challenges and all of your badges, hierarchy, and layout um, in Discord to get some feedback from our uh, uh, from our mentors. If you want to post just your type hierarchy or just your layout first before you get into the final, do that and we'll give you feedback on what doesn't feel like it's fitting right. Um, and so you can get connected at this Discord right up here. Let's take a look at what's coming up. I know that our friend Blake Stevenson, who has jetpacks and roller skates, just popped into chat and he is coming up later today. So right after this, we have editorial design with Aaron McPhee. And then we have Andrea Epi coming up with our Adobe XD challenge. It's like this, but for XD. Um, Kyle T. Webster is doing the draw along a little later today at 2.30 with plenty of sound effects and lots of fun. And then at the end of the day, three o'clock, our friend Jetpacks and Roller Skates, Blake Stevenson, who is in chat, um, will be on with Voodoo Val, one of my favorite illustrators. I have been following his work forever. Absolutely love it. It's super fun. Um, the first piece I saw of his completely made me laugh and I fell in love with his style. So make sure you set a little reminder and come back for that at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, other than that, let's hop back in and recap a little bit what we did today to make sure that you are all equipped to do your daily creative challenge. So today we designed a custom badge using shapes and the type on a path tool. Uh, we focused a lot on theory and making sure that we have visual balance in our overall compositions. Um, first, we use simple shapes of a circle and a rectangle to create this little tombstone kind of pattern. Uh, and then we filled it in with the shapes that we thought could work for balancing out our design. Um, we then went to Adobe Fonts, fonts.adobe.com, and created, yes, theory in action. We are learning something. Yes, that's what I want. Um, so... Uh, we picked out our type hierarchy, which was the highest one being someone yelling from a distance, um, a middle one, which was actually, uh, this is how it ended up going, was these three. So we have the top, which is our heading, is someone yelling at a distance. Then we have the mid, which is someone saying, hey, come on, yeah, let's talk about it. And the bottom one saying, okay, here's all the information that you need to know, right? So I wanna see those three in your creative challenge. And then we applied all of those together, plugged it in and made sure that our weights were balanced in our final composition of our final badge. So we can add some color to this, we can put it on something. I'd love to see what you all can do. Now, these daily creative challenges aren't just about following me into uh, whatever the challenge is and making sure that we do the same thing. It's about creative exploration and inspiration. Hopefully I can inspire you. I can teach you something so that you can explore and create something creatively on your own. So I'm excited to see what you create, what you come up with. Make sure that you post it in our discord and I'll be live again tonight uh, for everyone watching it from about, uh, let's see, seven and a half hours from right
right now. So wherever that is in your time zone, I'll be live again, seven and a half hours right here, behance.net uh, slash user slash hawk.co. I don't know. There's a way to find it and follow along. Um, and uh, yeah, you can do that. And I will see you again tonight for our stream for Australia or for our daily challenge feedback. I promise that I would nail the outro and boy, am I going to, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Text your friends and know that there's always something to learn. Bye.